Continuing our discussion about some common data structures, in this lecture we're going to get into binary trees. So binary trees, uh, basically if we take a quick review, stacks allow us to retrieve the last item that we stored. We can put something into it, we get that last thing we put into it back. Queues allow us to retrieve the first item stored. So we put something into a queue, we put something else, put something else, put something else. And then we get the original thing, the first thing that we put in, that's the first thing to come out. We often call stacks a last in, first out, and we often call queues a first in, first out queue. Uh, with linked lists and dynamic arrays, they allow us to put things in any particular place. We can still find them there. We put something in a place, we add something at the end, we, we put something in a place, it's where it is, we find it there. Uh, binary trees kind of break this model a little bit. They are going to allow us to store items in a sorted order so that they can easily be retrieved at a later time. So when we create a binary tree, the structure of it kind of looks like a linked list. You know, we start with the root just like we started with the head in our linked list. Uh, and there's nothing there. But when we add a value to it, say let's, let's say we add 206, uh, we create a node and that node becomes our root so our root references this new node and it contains this value 206 but the difference is that when we have a linked list we have a reference to one other node uh, with a tree we actually reference two two different nodes we, we have a left child node and we have a right child node so right now we have a tree that has the root pointing to 206 which has no left child and has no right child so if we add another value, we, we basically need to find an empty spot for it in our tree. Now there's a, a couple of rules, there's a structure to this. So uh, we look at each tree node that we're going to, to evaluate here, and we compare what we're adding to that tree node. So if it's smaller, we go to the left side, and if it's larger, we go to the right side. And we continue that process until we find an empty spot. So if we're gonna add 87, we compare it to the root value here, 206. It's smaller, so we have to go to the left, so there's nothing there right now because our, our tree only has one value before we add 87. So we create that new node, and then we have 206 has a left child that is 87. If we had 294, it's larger than 206, so we go to the right. And since there's nothing there, we just added it that the root node's right child. So we're starting to fill in this tree, and we can add more values. If we add 132, we start at the root. It's smaller, so we go left. Then we compare it to 87, and it's larger, so it becomes this node's right child. So because that free space is there. You know, we kind of have to keep this pattern going until we find a free space. And if we add a couple of more values here, 312, 343, 99, and 304, uh, well, first we start with 312, so that's larger than 206, and then it's larger than 294 at the right child of 206. So we find this free spot, so 312 becomes 294, uh, the right child for, for that node. And then if we add more here, if we look at 343, well, it's, it's larger than 206, so we go to the right, and then uh, it's larger than 300, 294, and then it's larger than 312. So uh, it becomes the right child here. So we see that down here at 343. Uh, and then if we do 99, it's, it's, lar it's less than 206. So we go to the left and uh, it's larger than 87. So we go to the right and then it's less than 132. So it becomes a left child of 132. And if we look at 304, kind of the same thing. It's larger than 206. Uh, it's larger than 294. It's less than 312, so it becomes the left child here. It takes that spot. So you can see how we're kind of filling this in as we go. And if we add a bunch of other values, 214, 41, 50, 208, 144, 13, 208, and 266, you'll see they're going to fill in the rest of this tree. And now we've got this kind of organized order of our tree. Uh, you know, if we look at this, the tree, like every one of these nodes follows those rules, and it all follows the same pattern. So I guess the question is, now what? So so what? You know, so we've actually built this binary tree, and we've added a bunch of data to it, uh, but what are we going to do with it? So let's say we want to find a value in it. Let's say we want to find the value 99. Now, in this example, you could kind of just look at this, and you could say 99, but if we had, you know, 255 different nodes, it might take us a while to find that, you know, just visually. So, and a computer can't just find the thing visually, it's got to actually have the structure. So we start off at 206, and uh, then 99 is less than that, so we go to left, and then we go, we look, compare it to 87, and it's more than that, so we go right, and then it's less than 132, so we go left, 
And here we, we find it actually. So we've gone through, we've kind of navigated this tree. We've started at the root and moved downward. Uh, and we end up with this, this node here. So uh, our tree has 15 values in it. If we count this, we have eight nodes at the volume or the bottom, and then we have four nodes at the next layer up, and then two nodes at the next layer up, and then one, one node at the root level. So uh, we have 15 nodes. So finding 99 only took four comparisons. Uh, this should sound a lot like binary search to you. Basically what a, a tree does is it kind of builds up a binary search uh, in memory, in the structure. So if you had twice as many values, if you had 31 values, it would only take five comparisons to find or to not find if it's not there. You know, it would only take five comparisons to find what you're looking for. If you had a tree with 63 values, it would only take six comparisons. So uh, you could find that pretty quickly. And if you go all the way up to 1,023, uh, if it's got the same kind of structure, then it's only going to take 10 comparisons. So you can see how this is going to be pretty efficient. We get up into, you know, a billion values in our tree, and it's really only going to take 30 comparisons. So that, that's pretty good. Uh, just like binary search, finding things should be big O of log n. And let, let's think about how we're going to use this tree now. So a set is something we might use a binary tree to create. So a binary tree kind of explains how things happen inside of your structure. The set really defines what happens to the outside world. So a set is a data structure that allows us to test for membership. So we put a bunch of things into a set, and the set either contains it or it doesn't have it. Uh, sets typically don't have duplicates. You know, when we define a set, we want its values to be unique. We want it to not have duplicates. And it shouldn't necessarily have any specific order. So with a tree, we know that it kind of has this sorted order. But uh, when we deal with sets, we, we're not really going to use that order for anything specific directly. Uh, in Java, we have uh, something called a tree set. So it's in java.util. Uh, and then there's, there's a tree set class. And it basically is this implementation. It's building a set based on a tree, a binary tree structure. So a set's usually going to have these methods. We're going to be able to add to the set, you know, so we add a value. Um, if we add something that already exists there, we replace it. Uh, that gets into weird questions of identity, right? Because a lot of things may be equivalent. They may be equal, but they may not be the exact same thing, you know. So uh, that can get a little bit weird. You know, in Java, you can create an integer an integer object and set it to 5, and then you can create a new integer object uh, with the value of 5, and then those are two different objects, even though they're equivalent objects. So when we find things that are equivalent, we actually want to replace them here. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about identity at a later time. Uh, but if we write this effectively, then with a binary tree, then adding to the set should be big O of log n, which is reasonably efficient. Uh, removing from the tree should be big O of log n as well. So when we want to remove a value, we basically find where it is, and then we take it off of its left child, the parent's left child or right child. When we want to determine if something is in the tree, that's also going to be big O of log n. You know, we have to traverse the tree the same way we did when we were looking for 99 a few slides ago. Uh, we want to determine if it's there, if it's, and we just kind of do that navigation. And if we have a well structured tree, then we should have about big O of log n performance. And then, you know, if we're smart about this, uh, this is actually a typo in the slide. It should be big O of 1 when we want to return the unique values in the set, or the number of unique values in the set. You know, we could count them all, and I guess that would be big O of in, but uh, we typically can make that big O of one if we're smart about our implementation. And we'll, we'll take a crack at implementing one of these in a later lecture. We also have maps. So maps are like sets, but instead of just values, a map stores values based on a key. So we call the relationship between a key and its value a mapping. Uh, basically, we're taking keys and we're mapping them to values because a lot of times we want to find something, you know, like if we're looking something up in a database or uh, we're trying to find, you know, some particular value, we, we might want to use an ID or something that is easier to reference than a whole big complex objects. Objects. So we uh, we might want to create something that's a mapping from key to value. Uh, just like values and sets, a map doesn't have duplicate keys, and the keys don't have any real necessary order. Uh, again, with the tree, then we're probably going to have some kind of order, but it, it's not going to necessarily be exposed. So we use a map to store some value based on a key and retrieve it later based on that same key. Uh, if you use Python, you're probably pretty familiar with dictionaries, and, and that's basically just a map. Uh, in Java, we build, we could have a, a map based on a tree, and it's called a tree map. It's in the java.util package. Uh, so, you know, this is a pretty common approach to building a map.
a map will usually have the following methods in addition to size and probably in addition to a few other basic methods uh, we will probably want to put something into the map so we might want to add a mapping from that key to that value if the key already exists we replace the key and we replace the value so we can when we put we may add something or we may replace something depending on what's already in the tree with the binary tree this should be very similar to add uh, is if we're building a set so it should be big O of log n and we might also want to retrieve from our map, so getting from the map is going to be big O of log n as well. Should work about the same way. So basically, when we have the key, we call get on our map, and then we retrieve the particular value associated with it. We probably also have remove. Uh, you know, we want to remove the same kind of way. We want to remove the key and value mapping from the tree. Uh, with a binary tree, that's going to be big O of log n. And size, and here this should be big O of 1. You know, we should probably just keep count of this and, and be able to retrieve that very quickly. Uh, the other method that you may see is contains key. Uh, so if we think about how we were building a set, we had that contains method. Uh, if you kind of think about this, uh, I, I, a map is really just like a set of keys but it gives us this ability to like store something associated with that key so that's that's kind of the big difference between key maps and sets so in this lecture we looked over binary trees and kind of the basics of how they work and how they operate we talked a little bit about membership and in you know the membership in the set and you know trying to figure out if something's there we talked about sets which are just data structures that uh contain some kind of value don't have duplicates uh, no necessary order we talked about maps which are like sets but uh, as far as the keys go you know we map from keys to values but the keys don't have duplicates they're unique and uh, it probably doesn't have any kind of necessary order uh, and then we talked a little bit about keys so the idea of this like key to value mapping now there are is some complexity here that we're going to get into in later lectures when we start implementing some of these structures uh you know there and there are also some challenges with trees you know like trees work really well when we sort of put random data in them but if we have sorted data our tree is going to get really messy and inefficient really quickly and just like everything in data structures is a trade-off you know if we put sorted data or reverse sorted data into a tree its performance is really going to go badly that's actually going to become big o of n uh, which is not great so every Every one of these data structures has some kind of fallback. Uh, so we'll get into some of these in future lectures. We're going to take a look at some other common data structures and just give an overview first, and then we'll get it deeper into them. But for now, thanks for watching.